Scientists have calculated the solar system passes through a deadly dark matter disk every 30 million years. Every time it does so, a barrage of life exterminating asteroids get flung at the Earth. And sure enough, astronomers are warning that over the past few years, the number of major asteroids narrowly missing the Earth is increasing rapidly. So if we're talking about an impact on land, the crater is going to be 20,000 foot in diameter, and then the devastation is going to be 50 to 100 miles beyond that. A blast of 500 mile an hour winds carrying a barrage of rocks the size of washing machines would flatten 90% of trees, buildings, and bridges. As devastating as a land strike would be, a hit off the coast could be even more deadly. We're talking about setting out radial tsunamis in all directions. If you don't get out of the strike zone, you're gonna be dead. As we enter the dark matter disk again, scientists are racing to plan defenses against death by asteroid. The first solution is the same thing you may have seen in movies, nuke it. But the most a nuke would likely do is fracture the asteroid into several no less deadly pieces. The scale of these objects and the speed at which they're traveling is so large that a nuclear bomb probably wouldn't stop them anyway. It's gonna be like a gnat hitting a jumbo jet. It's not gonna be enough. But maybe you could nudge it out of the way, same way that you might hit one ball against another one in a game of pool. NASA is investigating whether it's possible to nudge these planet killers out of the way. Well, we've actually hit an object in space before, in 2005. NASA launched a mission called Deep Impact. Deep Impact's mission was to fire an 820-pound copper core into the Temple One comet to bring material up from beneath its surface for analysis. Now that copper was traveling at 23,000 miles per hour, and when it impacted that comet, it moved it just a little bit. Even a tiny change in direction, over hundreds of thousands of miles, could be enough to cause an asteroid to miss the Earth. If you can move its orbit just a little bit, and if you do it early enough, by the time it gets to where Earth is, it misses us entirely. If we can catch Earth-bound asteroids early enough, and if we hit them hard, we may be able to deflect them. NASA is already working on such an asteroid deflection defense system. Didymos B will be passing close by the Earth in 2022, and NASA's DART mission is going to intercept it. It's a bit like playing pool in space, except if you make the right shot, the prize is our survival. 1961, American couple Betty and Barney Hill see a strange light in the sky and lose all memory of the three hours afterwards. Betty reports the alleged incident to Pease Air Force Base. It's filed in air intelligence information records, but the story does not end there. After having strange nightmares, the couple is referred to a hypnotherapist called Benjamin Simon. During hypnosis, Simon invites the Hills to recall every detail of what happened in those lost three hours. And the story they tell is unbelievable. Both Betty and Barney are brought aboard a spacecraft. On the spacecraft, there are aliens. They extracted DNA from both Betty and Barney, uh, reproductive material as well. Barney and Betty's physical description of the aliens gives birth to a legend. People usually observe this alien species as a big bulb head, gray skin, and big black eyes with a tiny little nose and mouth. They have two arms, two hands, two feet, and they function and they walk around just like humanoids. This species is referred to as the grays. The grays. The grays? The grays. 43% of all the abduction stories that people report describe the same exact creature, the gray. Betty Hill and her husband are the very first people to claim to have met and been examined by a gray. After 
Betty's examination was over, she was left alone with the one that she called the leader. Betty actually asks the head gray, where are you from? When she said that, he produced a three-dimensional looking map. So under hypnotic regression, she actually draws the star map. Betty draws a series of circles and dots. Between 12 of these are lines, which Betty says show trade routes of the greys. So now, when she comes out of hypnosis, now they have a physical record of this star map that the aliens supposedly showed her. People were laughing at Betty. Oh, those stars don't exist. That is stupid. The problem is there is no pattern of sky visible from Earth that looks like the picture that she made. But the science of astronomy is advancing fast. Eight years later, an amateur astronomer, Marjorie Fish, decides to investigate Betty's star map using the newly released Gliese Star Catalog. So by this time, and this is in the early 70s, scientists have been able to measure the distance to the nearest stars. Marjorie Fish uses this information to create a three-dimensional map of the sun's sort of galactic neighborhood. Fish assumes that the Gray's 3D map shows a view from somewhere other than Earth. She spends five long years comparing Betty's pattern of dots with her 3D model, hoping to discover the location of the Gray's home world. She twists it and turns it and kind of looks at it from different angles until finally she's able to kind of make a match between the map that was recovered under hypnosis and what she sees with her star sculpture. And this is how she found that two major dots in the star map could be Zeta Reticuli. In this moment, she realized this was exactly what Betty drew. It's a triumph for Fish. The findings are published in Astronomy Magazine. But despite the Hill's description of the Greys and Betty's brave attempt to recall where these aliens came from, the claims fail to convince astronomers. It just proves that, like, if you look through enough combinations of random dots, you'll get another co collection of random dots. But some investigators don't accept the random dot theory. Betty's star map is pretty rudimentary, but it is possible that it actually does depict Zeta Reticuli. It does look quite similar. If this map is true, if this map is true, it's the most important map in human history. Whatever the truth of Betty and Barney's story, for many, Zeta Reticuli will remain in our imagination, the spiritual home of aliens, at least until the real thing comes along.